Well, shit. I guess it's time travel. When I recorded a recent video questioning whether time travel explains the de-aging of Harrison Ford in the upcoming Indiana Jones sequel, my goal was to rely only on available official information and not speculate based on wild rumors. Thanks to your feedback, I realized that my point, that we shouldn't rely on anonymous purveyors of unsubstantiated gossip, would be stronger when applied to the apparent internet scare that Indiana Jones will be replaced at the end of the film. And, get this, by a woman. I am confident that no one will replace Indiana Jones. In part, because a few years ago, Steven Spielberg said he wouldn't allow it. But primarily because James Mangold debunked this notion a few times on Twitter. Most recently, on December 2nd, he wrote, No one is taking over, or replacing Indy, or donning his hat, nor is he being erased through some contrivance. And he never was, not in any cut or script. Rereading that quote, I note that Mangold was careful to include contrivance. Obviously, he's aware of the baseless rumors. He even name-checked one internet troll in a previous post. So it seems he's attempting to debunk the Phoebe Waller-Bridge travels back in time to replace a male character bullshit we can't stop hearing about. But that he wrote contrivance and didn't just specifically refer to time travel is curious. Doing so would have been much simpler and left no ambiguity. And while I don't expect him to take the time to specifically debunk every rumor floated about his film, let's face it, he's got some VFX to fix. The evidence for time travel, and in some instances the absence against it, is piling up. At first, each time Mangold shoots down another rumor regarding Indy's replacement, the more obvious it becomes that he hasn't spoken out against the other long-rumored plot element, time travel. Next, and runner-up for the most obvious clue, is the name of the film, Dial of Destiny. Okay, yes, you all thought that already. I get it, duh. It seems to be an allusion to a sundial, an instrument for marking time, time, time travel. It even may have appeared in the trailer. Finally, there's a nearly unambiguous quote from Mads Mikkelsen about playing the villain of the piece. Mickelson told Empire Magazine that his character is a man who would like to correct some of the mistakes of the past. There is something that could make the world a much better place to live in. My character would love to get his hands on it. Of course, that something must be the titular dial. That the story would feature a Nazi traveling back in time to help Hitler win the war is not implausible. There's been similar historical fiction in literature, films, and TV shows that explore the idea of the Nazis winning World War II. On the other hand, the one thing that holds me back from wholeheartedly believing in the time travel theory is Mangold's statement regarding the young indie scene in the movie's trailer. As reported by People magazine, the initial scene, the one set in 1944, will be the only one in which the star is digitally de-aged. But it's hard to recall a time travel film in which that reality-bending power is employed only once. And time travel aside, in each of the previous films, the MacGuffin of the story is ultimately used in the climax, resulting in the demise of the antagonist who sought its power. You know, if there's a time travel device in this movie, it will kill Mickelson's character because he doesn't understand how dangerous it is, while Indy's in the background nobly trying to stop him. What's curious is that young Indy appears in two costumes during the apparent flashback. He's dressed both in a Nazi uniform and later in his iconic adventurer's garb. And sure, Indy undoubtedly has a reason to disguise himself, and possibly the time to do it. We've seen him use this trick in the other films. But a younger Mickelson is also seen wearing two different costumes in what seems to be the flashback era. Here, He's flanked by two Nazi officers, likely delivering the mysterious dial. Now, none of this is to say that we shouldn't take Mangold at his word. We should. That another filmmaker lied to you to protect the fans' enjoyment of an upcoming film shouldn't have you distrust Mangold. He has a good track record. But he also hasn't said anything about time travel. And none of this is to say that we should rely on unfounded rumors. We shouldn't. But it certainly seems the evidence is pointing to time travel being a plot device in the upcoming Indiana Jones sequel. So because I love time travel in films, I began to question why I would miss these clues. Ultimately, I concluded, it is my strong dislike of Crystal Skull. Now, while there's plenty in that film to dishearten a fan of the franchise, including 
the many obvious green screen shots, the over the top sequences, and just Shia LaBeouf just generally. The film truly disappointed me by introducing science fiction into what was canonically an action adventure series. But George Lucas wanted to update the genre of the last sequel to fit the films that were popular during the era in which Indy was then set. So we got 1950s Cold War sci fi. In fact, Lucas's original title for Crystal Skull was Indiana Jones and the Saucer Men. Dial of Destiny is starting to sound like a fantastic title. But again, I love time travel stories. So am I against time travel in indie altogether? Or do I resist it in an indie film because I associate it with the science fiction genre that broke Crystal Skull? What if instead the film introduced time travel that wasn't the result of an in-story modern technological advance? If the device is explained as one created by the ancient mathematician and inventor Archimedes, as some internet sleuths theorize, would that be okay? Vanity Fair suggests the object in the trailer that is likely the dial bears some loose resemblance to a Hellenistic-era mechanism recovered from a shipwreck in 1901. That sounds like some straight-up Indiana Jones shit there. Or what if the power to control time comes from a holy relic? The MacGuffin would then be consistent with that of the first three films. Then would I feel better about Indy attempting to stop time travel? Honestly, I'm not sure. But surely, among the many time travel films I love, some must have included a non-sci-fi explanation for the time-hopping power. Let's see. Let's do a quick uh, internet search here. Yep. Uh, Peggy Sue Got Married. I love that. It's another 1980s movie. Wait, Kate and Leopold. I like Kate and Leopold. Who directed that again? Well, shit. I guess there's time travel in Indiana Jones. But what do you think? Would time travel be okay if it's based on some ancient artifact and not the result of some 1960s era technology? Let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, please like it and subscribe to our channel. And check out our weekly 1980s podcast, 1980s Now. There's a link in the show notes. And thanks for watching.